we're live. Uh, appreciate the patience while we um, waited to find out if we were going to have Kiss. Uh, the answer is we are not. And that's okay. We're still going to play. We're going to have a good time. It's going to be great. I will. Thanks. <laughs> And before we get started, I just would like to announce to the internet that I updated my Etsy shop, added a bunch of dice, some super cool dragon heads, and um, some some Sims Plumbob keychains. And if you want to see my Etsy shop, you can hit exclamation point Etsy in the chat. Um, should there be? We're doing the podcast on Sunday on the Girlspot Gaming Channel. We're going to talk about mental health. It'll be something. <laughs> okay, that's it. Oh, I got to pull up D&D Beyond. Uh, we met Jerry with a G. Uh, oh, I'm free from jail, and I'm kind of fucking around trying to figure out how to find, uh, Damien. And then they're stuck with Jerry with a G. There's 15 points of healing, not 6. Um, where... We didn't read, look at what... I healed last game, so apparently I had six. I healed fifteen points of damage and not six, like I initially thought. So I'm just gonna fix that really quick. Anyway, um, I'm Sabina got left back. Got English is a thing. Sabina is got out of her cell thanks to. Alari and Karnas, Alari, Karnas, and Bromley. They met the boss lady of the arena while Sabina asked Crow Sparrows about where dead bodies go. And she got pointed in the direction of the North Gate, where the Grey Dwarves bring machines into the for arena fights. Um, Alari and Karnas got to be entertained by Jerry, specifically with the G. And Eventually, Lari got her audience with the boss lady, which is a woman with jet black hair and golden eyes. And apparently, Karnas was a business partner of the boss lady, which is low-key. They took advantage of him. They high-key took advantage of him. <laughs> <laughs> high-key took advantage of him, not low-key, but, you know. Um, after Jerry made Jerry with a G made sure that Lari and the rest are going to eventually have dinner at his house, where it, which is okay, which is a blue house with a red door and a nice tree named Jerry with a J. Specifically, Damien is currently locked in a storeroom. After some time, he he was wrapped in bandages that have some kind of runes on them. Um, he's in Almond's tower, which is in Wind Windwell, and eventually managed to bust out of the coffin and the bandages. Found a crate of old weapons and shields, and he can find- you're sobbing some from somewhere in the room, and there's some kind of entity in the room with him that he can't see. It's writing everything down again. I don't forget as much. <laughs> it's very important to take notes. <laughs> buddy cat. Fresh little buddy cat. And Lari has a blue mark on her hand for some reason. Oh, yeah. yeah, she should, because Jerry's like, oh, we'd love to have you for dinner. And uh, Lari's like, oh, well, we have to go make sure Damien's alive. And Jerry's like, and then you'll come for dinner tonight. And she's like, yes, I promise. And he's like, okay, shake on it. And now she shook on it. And now there's a blue mark. 
Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and definitely don't shake on it. Something like that, yeah. Am I able to see much since it's, I'm assuming it's dark and dark vision is a thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh. Are there any, can I tell if there's anyone else alive in the room? Uh, investigation, I suppose, would probably be my best bet. Or... You got it. Come on, plus 12, don't fail me. 24. Investigation. There are weird sounds coming from upstairs. Sixteen. So that was a twenty-four for stealth and sixteen for investigation. You got it. Fourteen. Okay, I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. Can I tell which one it's coming from? You know what I just realized? <laughs> You're gonna be very quiet on the VOD. Why? Because until now, I had you muted in Discord. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully you came in through my mic a little bit. Um, oh, wow. no. Oops. <laughs> Do we need to, like, start pre-watching the stream for you? <laughs> yes. Because the last two, the uh, second part of the arena stream, I noticed he was, like, Super, super quiet. I think I was still using my Blue Yeti on that stream. And that, and my Blue Yeti started to crap out around then. So I'm not, so I'm not using it anymore. I'm just using this and trying to keep him unmuted in Discord. <laughs> um, okay, while I'm over in that corner, as I hear, can I tell when those footsteps are coming back around? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, would I it sounds to... like a heavy, like, boot walking through. Would I be able to detect magic on that? Yeah. If you have the spell slot. Yeah, it doesn't actually have a spell slot for that one, interestingly enough. 
Oh, because you're a warlock, right. Yep. Um... And what does Detect Magic actually give you? For the duration, you sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you. If you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic, and you learn a school of magic, if any. The spell can penetrate most barriers, but it is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, a, feet of, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. Okay. It won't really do much, but... It'll um, it's a magic, some kind of magic, even though I can't dispel it. So you cast detect magic on the thing walking around. Yeah. While still hiding from your corner. Yep. You kind of do your wibbly wobbly stuff. Your wibbly wobbly stuff. Basically. <laughs> you just like shine your eyes and start seeing. Oh, God, there's man. Um, you see a large form of just invisible magic that's walking through. Yeah, I'm dispelled either, so that really won't do much for me. And I'm not eager to lose the 16 health hit points that I have. Uh, behind you, the bottom coffin is also glowing with magic. Well, that's at least a little bit more handy. How far does the, your tech magic go? 30 feet. Various other crates and coffins spark up with magic as well. Good to know, good to know. I'm going to try and push the top coffin. So it's the two coffins that are like this then? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna very try. I'm gonna try and very quietly push this top coffin off, so I can have access to the second coffin. Sure. Go ahead and give me a brain check to can do it con uh, in a controlled manner. You got it. Seven. As you put your hands on the top coffin and start to push. You hear what sounds like a shriek coming from down on the other side of the room. It kind of stops you dead cold as your head whips around. Oh, good. You don't, you don't see anything. You do hear the clump, clump, clump of uh, footfalls from upstairs. Oh, good. You can hear a door open. And it slams shut. <laughs> A moment later, you see a crack of light coming from the top of the stairs that wind around the corner. Fuck. And a, and a silhouette of a human. Double fuck. Uh -huh. Everyone else! <laughs> uh, you guys are with Jerry just leaving the stadium. Cardinus. Uh, and... I guess Alari... Meet back up with Bromley right outside the arena? Yeah. With Jerry in tow? Uh, Sabina, you had wandered off. Oh, shit. I'm gonna wander back to the Coliseum. <laughs> it's fair enough. I think you just, like, kind of gone around it. Yeah. You kind of finish your circuit as you see Bromley just kind of waiting there. Not really knowing what the hell to do yet. Uh, Bromley, before you see any of your friends, you see a couple kids come up to you and goes, Hey, mister! Mister! You seen any dollies around? Dollies? Dollies! My big brother took my dolly and I'm trying to find her. Her name's oh. Susie. Oh. So it's ten times I've been standing here. No, I've not seen any other kids besides you. He always does this. He's going to cut in half, he is. Do you happen to have a couple of coins so I can get a new dolly, sir? Hang on. How much do I actually have? Yeah, I can give him... How much? A couple, a couple of silver or something? Yeah. Yeah. 
that did that hang on though uh my my little friend i kind of dig around my uh, pouch and I grab a couple you know a couple silver uh, here this should help you this should help you out you take a couple silver out of your corn purse and head it to the ghost she goes oh thank you mister i can buy a nice new dolly thank you oh. thank you and she kind of uh, runs off down one of the uh streets and into a, a shop you hear the laughter of children behind you as they kind of run off and play in the street. Yeah, it's good to hear uh, kids actually uh, having fun. Um. At this point, you see. Everyone converges at one spot. Uh, it was... Uh, who, was who was that with? Damien? No, not Damien. Uh, nope. Everyone but Damien. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I, I knew something was in there. Kind of says, Bromley, this is our new friend, Jerry. Oh. <laughs> well, hello, it, Jerry. It's with a Born G. Name is Jerry. With the J. It's good to meet you, sir. I'm from town. I live in there. Alari promised that we would go after we find Damon, that we would go eat, um, dinner with Jerry. My wife makes a lovely chili. It's Ooh. all the dwarves love it. Oh, some, some good hot Would you hot like food? to have some? Some good hot food or town that would hit the spot right about now. We gotta find Damien first, and then we can have chili. Yeah. Mix it with dwarven ale, she does. Ooh. Gives it quite a punch. Back, back, when, I was, back when I was at home, there was, a, there was a very delicious dwarven ale that we made. What brand was it? We've what? got some Ballastone ale. Now, this was a, a specialty... Uh, Mix from uh, my home, my home in Braventhorn. Braventhorn, I have uh, that. I have. Yeah. Well, you said you need help looking for your friend. Yes. I'm, I'm a goat, and that's what I do. And they have kindly invited me to come with them with for the day. My boss says I have the day off. Because I've already left my position. Hope I can go back to work tomorrow. <clears throat> oh, um, Mr. Bromley, sir. Watch out for the kids out in the streets. Little thieves they are. Now come on, let's have start heading towards Winwood. Winwell. Winwell. Because it starts like... He kind of like... Hikes his pants up a little bit. Reties the, uh cord on it it's very slack and like kind of loops down to show part of his ass as he walks ahead of you guys he's kind of kind of like a, a port belly and he walks his belly first goes so where are you folks from haven't seen you much around town i haven't i'm from here Yeah. Yeah. Because you're my best friend. Yeah. And I, I bet on you. Yeah. But you you got stolen by a bird. Yeah. I didn't bet on that. Nobody bet on that. <laughs> I would have won a lot of money if I did. Yeah. Um, get corners. What? If you're going to fight in the arena again and you plan on getting captured by a bird, can I bet on you beforehand? Um, okay, but I don't really plan on getting captured by a bird. Then I don't have to be a god anymore, because I'll just be rich. If I fight in the arena again, I'll let you know so you can bet on me, because, um, we'll probably win again. Okay. Okay. That sounds like a plan. Do you guys have any horses or anything? Or are we just going to walk? Maybe a cottage? Uh, we we uh, we traveled here in a caravan, but it uh, 
Yeah, it had been better days. Oh, a caravan will be lovely. Do you have any of the cults still? No. You sort them already? That's impressive. How much did you get for all of them? We didn't, really sell it. It we didn't really sell it. It kind of got damaged all the way here. Mm, that's a shame. Yeah. Well, let's best be get on our way, we will, yeah? Yep. Dirt. He goes at the north entrance of Katal and kind of hangs left to go west. Um, you guys want to ask me anything while you're traveling? You have about like an hour's walk. Do you ever see any other kobolds around here while I was gone? In the arena? Yeah, no. No. What dragon? They got a couple a dragon. No. Oh. They got a couple goblins. That's kind of the same thing. I'm offended. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. I'd rather be compared to a goblin than to a gnome. You don't like gnomes either. No, they're the worst. I haven't met anyone who does. Oh, I'm glad it's not got just real me. big heads on them. Yeah. Big headed gnome bastards. Hey, hey, what you say about gnomes? My wolf's a gnome. You said you didn't like gnomes either. I don't like most of them. Oh. Um. Maybe your wife will be different than the other gnomes. Well, she's not the same gnome. That's good. She's only one. <laughs> um. Damien. Yes, sir. You see the silhouette of a man. Kind of like the shadow elongates as it goes down farther from the light. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. You actually see what looks to be a teenage boy at the top of the staircase. He's got his, a little tunic, a brown tunic with a nice belt and some uh, twill pants. Some leathered buckled shoes. Short, short haircut. He looks to be about half elf, which seems pretty rare for this area due to the vast racism against elves. And then being portrayed as predominantly evil. It... I'm gonna what? Just... Nothing. Maddie raises a good question, but I don't want to necessarily think about that. Um, Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> um, yeah, believe it or not, I can be quiet, Brian. I don't believe you. <laughs> I'm going to, if possible, try to sneak by him to go upstairs. Actually, mm, no, I want to... Hmm. I'm going to kind of duck down by the coffins, if I can, and still stay stealth. Because I want to get the person out of the coffin. You duck down here, a large quack. <laughs> God damn it! Um, no. <laughs> go ahead and roll me a stealth again. You got it. Come on, roadiness. 22. Yeah. Uh, you start to hear him mutter. He goes, God, I don't know where that crate is he wants. We need a better organization system. We do. You hear him go, clap, clap, as like, as, like a bunch of torches just fucking light up in the room. Oh, shit. How, how are you hiding? You said you're uh, by some boxes. Is, are the coffins against the wall or are they out from the wall? Uh, they're against the wall and, like, kind of pushed up against it. Um... It's like a big storeroom, though. There's stuff everywhere. Kind of hiding in the shadows of the coffins as much as I can. Not that it's very easy with his coloring and all that, but... Stranger things have happened. And hopefully they're just, like, if there's a box near there, that's where he's gonna be crouched. Is gonna be behind the box. You see the 
small half elf boy kind of walk to the middle of the room and snap his fingers as the crate opens and goes Arr! and see him rummage around pulls out a weird looking chalice inspects it for a little bit like this might be it kind of roots around grabs some uh, purplish pink crystals puts them in it snaps his fingers the chest closes again you hear like the woods, gr uh, the nails groaning back into the wood as he starts going back up the stairs. With a clap, clap, the torches snuff out. Okay. He ascends the staircase. You hear the heavy door shut from above. Oh, thank God. Okay. You also then hear a sliding lock. Fuck. Well, that complicates things. I'm gonna keep... Yeah, you can't stress that on your head, silly. I'm gonna keep trying to push the, cop the top coffin off. Sure. Uh, go ahead and give me a strength check. Come on, control. 21. Nat 20. Oh. Yeah, are able to, like, scoot it off so it doesn't squeak much at all. Uh, go ahead and roll me a luck for me, just for funsies. Okay. That's my wake chits. Just go all the way down to roll. Twenty plus six. Yeah. I think they're both fine. <coughs> I bet. I hate the ass thing. Well. <laughs> Just it. Come here. No. What are you doing? Oh, me. Silly justice. Silly justice. Tricks are for kids. <laughs> no, no, of course, shut up. Yeah, 12. Okay. Are you done barking? Huh? Yes, are you done barking? You were able to move the coffin off. It feels easily over like 100, 150 pounds. Something heavy is in it. You can feel a bunch of dead weight, essentially. Uh, but you slough that coffin off and it kind of slams into the floor a wee bit. You kind of, like, recoil. I was like, oh shit, oh shit. You see, with, how long does your detect magic last? Or you can just have it up all the time. Don't Sorry, give him butt butts over there. Uh, how long does your detect magic last? Uh, didn't actually. Uh, doesn't actually. Oh, um, about ten minutes. Okay. So as you're moving the coffin, it kind of slams into the ground, makes a bit of noise. Damien kind of recoils a little bit as like, oh shit, I just made fucking noise. As you turn around and look, you don't quite see. You're expecting to see something behind you, but you don't. But you look up and you just see a box that's just hovering above you. Okay. Which it then moves over you and like the air gets real thick. It's kind of hard to breathe. Um. And it just lowers the box on top of that coffin. And then, like, the aura of magic kind of moves backwards and back onto its trail. Okay. Not the most terrifying thing I've, that's ever happened to me, but close. So it was a different box? Or is the copy? Like a small box? crate. Okay. 
and I'm not gonna let that stop me. I'm gonna push. I'm gonna try and push that one on top of the other coffin. Yeah, it's it's like a little toolbox. You can just move that easily. Uh, the other coffin, you kind of put your ear to it. You do hear a soft sobbing. Okay. But it sounds real weak. I'm gonna knock on the coffin. Hey, I'm gonna just say, hey, I'm gonna get you out of there. Hang on. You just hear the game too. <laughs> What are you using to open that coffin? That's what I'm trying to think. <laughs> um, none of these spells are very... Actually, um, can I take one of the rusty swords from the crate that I found? Yeah. Can I use that to try and pry this, the um, coffin open? Sure I can. Give me a strength check at, at advantage. You got it. Uh, contact stop messing with me. Ew, eight. You kind of start hammering the edge of that sword in. You try and put some weight on the edge to get leverage, and you hear a bang, bang as the blade just snaps in half. Okay. You hear the lock, the door lock, slide and slam open. Fuck. Hear her footsteps rapidly going down the stairs. What are you doing? <laughs> um, dashing behind some ba some uh, crates and hiding. Give me another stealth roll. Shit. Um, twenty two. Since that would probably be the first roll. Either way. <laughs> Me too. You hear, you, you see the teenager kind of run down to the first landing and just take the scan of the room. He goes, I know I heard something down here. And he's not that loud. He never, never make touches the metal. What the hell was that? <laughs> you see him open up his cloak and go through like a series of wands to try and figure out what the hell he wants. Grabs a green one, kind of flicks it into the air. As a bunch of uh, magical dust starts sparkles in the entire area. Go ahead and give me a dexterity saving throw. Okay. No, I did 18. No, the second was a fucking nut 20. Why are you rolling everything with advantage? I don't know, because I haven't changed it back yet. Let me redo that with actual, with actually fix. Because it likes, to, it likes to remember that, hey, you rolled with advantage last time. You want to keep rolling with that? 25. Shit, I'll take that. Um, You're able to dodge all the uh, dust that's just unlimited and sparkling everything around. You see the creature that you saw through your detect magic. It's like full, like fleshed out form. It looks more like... Uh, give me your arcana roll. Okay. Nine. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't know what it was. It looks like a form of an elemental. Okay. You don't know of what kind or what the hell it's even doing. But you did feel it pass through you. Before. Oh, fun. You see the kid start walking down the aisles, just kind of looking for something that's out of the out of the ordinary. The footsteps get closer. He comes up to the corner where you're messing with the crates. He goes, "Why is there a broken sword on the floor?" He just kind of levitates the sword up to his hand and inspects it without even touching it. <clears throat> I'm a show master. 
as he makes his way back up the stairs. Door closes. Door locks. I really hope this is fucking worth it. You hear the footfalls of him upstairs, just thump, 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 thump. Dogs have zoomies tonight, apparently. <laughs> That's uh, fine. Because I like tempting fate. Let's grab another sword. Alright, you pull another rest of the long sword out and you go shing. You kind of start to wedge it in. Or how would you like to do it? Can I tell what's holding the coffin seal? You can safely presume nails. Okay, I'm gonna try and slowly move the sword along, like, get the sword in the edge very carefully without hitting the person, hopefully, and just try to, like, move it around, move it along the edges. Uh, go ahead and give me a strength roll. And a luck roll. You know, for fun please. <laughs> nine. Looking me, great. Me with nines tonight, I swear. <clears throat> Twenty plus six. Twenty one. <laughs> so the bad news is you broke another sword. The good news is you didn't stab who was ever inside. <laughs> You do see the coffin start to rock and shake a bit as you're putting edge sword blades into the coffin itself, trying to wedge it open. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You, you see the person way. inside is just panicking. Chill, chill. I'm trying just to get it open. Banging on the coffin, like, get me out of here! <laughs> get me out of here! I'm trying. Now keep quiet. Um, they are not keeping quiet. <laughs> they are very much like just awoke, panicked. Listen, like that kind of claustrophobic freak out. Hey, I need you to calm down. Do you want to bring the necromancer down here? Ne ne necromancer, no! <laughs> I just want to go home. That was a really lucky <laughs> roll, is right? Um. God. I'm. You know, at this point, I'm gonna try and try and just punch it open. What are you, a monk? <laughs> Go ahead, make an attack roll. I haven't had it much luck with any other with any smart moves, so I'm gonna use brute force. Fourteen with two damage. Uh um. One second, let me consult. Oh no. <laughs> He's looking at a DM screen. Um, your punch is not sufficient to even crack the wood. Fuck. You you deal two bludgeoning damage to your knuckles. Cheers. You're like, fuck. This is why I don't punch people. Pretty much. <laughs> I'm not squishy. Well, yeah, I am, but I also know better than to do that usually. I'm. Uh, um. Uh, I might have to guiding bolt this just to. Hmm. <laughs> well, while Ark's thinking about what to do, yeah. we go back to the trail Please. of Cardis and Jerry and Bromley. We're about halfway. And that's how I met my wife. I wasn't even loud in that ball, I thought. But they let me in anyway. 
That's a, a beautiful question. story. Yeah. yeah. I thought I yes, was Yes, Patty, you're there too. <laughs> okay. You're being very quiet. I forget about you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Talk more, and I won't forget you. I don't want to interrupt. Uh, Maddie, what was your disguise again? Uh, I was a human. Okay. Uh, what what about you? Have, oh. have you... What? Nothing. The fuck you say? Nothing, I was just muttering to myself. You always talking to yourself back there. Might, might a bit suspicious, I might say, from a god's position. Don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. Why don't you tell us some of your stories? What stories is there to tell? Do you have a significant other? No. Do you have a brother? Or a sister? Why do I have to talk about that? Well, it's just friendly conversation, it is. Ah. You don't have, have to do family? nothing if you don't want. I do. I have a I wife. Know. Yeah, how did you meet her? I just <laughs> told that story. What you're listening? I spaced out a little bit. Well, I'll tell it again until it's like probably incarnates will just probably groan. Mm -hmm. Well, I was at this bar, you see. It was for halflings. But I ain't a halfling, I am. I'm quite big. I thought maybe I was a halfling at one point. Maybe a dwarf. But then I just kept growing. But all my friends were dwarves. I like the folk. Strong, sturdy. You like um, them so much you have them on your shirt. <laughs> I do, yes. <laughs> He got, like, he moves the tabard over, and you see, like, a uh, undershirt that has, like, a hand-embroidered, uh, like, two dwarves with, uh, beer mugs that are frothing, and they're just, like, clinking it. Dwarves have, like, little Viking horn hats and, like, long, blonde beards. He's like, yeah, I love dwarves. I wish I was a dwarf, but I ain't. So I figure, maybe, if my wolf was a bit small, and we have a kid, it'll be a dwarf. Is that how that works? Yeah, like the size difference. So that's why you married a gnome. Well, that and I love her. Oh. <laughs> Are gnomes capable of love? I, I, would, I would hope so. She said she loved me. Oh, that's nice. Rat's nest. <laughs> what are you talking about, little one? I said that's nice. Oh. What about you, Connor? You got anybody in your life? Yeah, I have a whole clan. Well, what are you clan? Um, they're the couples of Katal. No, you're the couple of Katal. Yeah, but I have. I have. Are you your own clan? I have a clan. They live um, away from the town. Away from Katal? Yeah, just a little That's bit. That's a little bit misleading, don't you think? They're close to Katal. And I just spent, like, two weeks getting... Two weeks? A month? I don't know. Some amount of time. <laughs> um, Getting an another clan and bringing them to my old clan so they can all... Be happy, and I met a wife. You met a wife? I I met someone, and she's now my wife. Oh. She's yellow, and her name is Mix. She's yellow? Yeah. What, what would you say about your wife? No, that's Not what color nice. she is. Like, I'm red. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Little misconstrued intelligence I have. That's okay. I'm sorry. I'm not very smart sometimes, either. You know what, Cortis? Neither am I. And that's all right. That's why we get along so well. We get what? Along. We're friends. That's why we're friends. Along what? We're friends. You're my friend, Cortis? Yeah. Oh, that's mighty nice. 
You're my friend too. Well, that's great. Um. He kind of looks around. Are you going to get picked up by a bird anytime soon? I hope not. Me too. I'm enjoying the walk. Have you seen any birds around here? Like big Oh, there's loads of birds around here. Like big ones? Sometimes. Oh. I just gotta the be careful. Hunter's Guild and Melikor generally takes care of all the big ones. But every now and then a woven or a rock will show up and just eat people. That's so I lost my brother. Gary. He thought he could tame it. Or to say, I wasn't the idiot in my family. Yeah, you can't really tame a rock. <laughs> Nothing from Bromley or uh, Sabina? No, I'm just kind of... <laughs> I'm just kind of looking around, just not being half attention to. How far uh, is this place? Oh, sorry. It's only about a mile's walk away from Catal. You guys are passing through uh, farms and orchards. You see a cattle farm on the left. You see an uh, apple orchard on the right. Up ahead, you can see a, a tower and some windmills. A couple smokestacks that are burning away. As you guys get into town, uh, Jerry goes, I have a friend around here. You what? I have a friend around here. A friend? Yeah. Oh, what's your friend's name? Well, I can't tell you that. It's very secretive. Oh. We used to be in the military together. Oh. But he got out as soon as possible. Uh, do you know him? I don't know. What's his name? I can't tell you that. Then I don't know if I know him. Hmm. Well, you would know if you saw him. What's he look like? And I told you about him. What's he look like? Um. Well, I can't tell you that either. Then I don't know. Okay. Okay. He kind of like starts walking through. People just go, hey, Jerry, how's it going? He's like, it's Jerry with the G. They're like. Sorry! <laughs> it's a, uh... A dwarf. a dwarf carrying... A dwarven woman with, like, braided red hair. And, like, a nice long summer dress. She's carrying bread into a tavern. He stops and goes, Ah, oh, Jerry! Good to see you again! How are you doing? Oh, just taking these folks out for... For a little adventure, it is. You know me, always wanting to be an adventure. What? <laughs> Kitty cat in your way? Yeah. Uh, Bromley. On this dwarf, you see that she has a pendant around her neck. And that is of the same uh, matching symbols as your clan. It's like, excuse me, my lady. The pendant around your neck. I, I'm from the same, uh, same clan. And I pull out that sheet of paper. Ah, you're from the Hammerstone clan, yes? Yes. I am Sir Bromley Hammerstone. You have your own insignia, don't you? Or are I yeah. supposed to take your word for it? I, I think I said the insignia is uh, on my shield, so I, I kind of I show that. Okay. Yeah. You kind of just like supposed to field forward and kind of clang it with your hammer, uh, hammer or flail. Yeah. He goes, "Hey, all right, let me drop the thread off and take you back to my home." I tell you, in there. Why thank you for that? See, she goes into the tavern. Like the door swing open, you hear like the, just a loud, boisterous atmosphere of people cheering and drinking and just merriment the faint uh, musics of bards playing uh 
all of you, even Damien, you were a loud boom. Damien, about a hundred feet above you, you just hear a concussive boom. Oh, good. Uh, everyone else that's not inside the tower sees that the top level of the wizard's tower, Jesus Christ, that's loud. What is that? What? That was my parents' Discord. <laughs> I don't Jesus. know how it always starts off so absurdly loud. I don't fucking know. Um, you see, like, all the windows on the top level of the tower just blown out with uh, smoke trailing out of them. You can see Jerry go, oh, shit. Hey, that's where we're going, it is. Come on now. As he starts moving towards the tower. Brahma, are you going with them, or are you... Uh, waiting for the dwarf. Uh, we'll let them go ahead. I'll go ahead and tell her that I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, right. She kind of swing the door open. She goes, Hi, I said it'd only be a couple minutes. It's a, I'm sorry, my lady. There's something that we, uh, I need to uh, attend to real fast with, uh, with my uh, uh, my party friends. I will be right back in a little bit. In a, we'll... Uh, Alright, I'll wait here. But you're buying my drinks for me while you're gone. Alright, save me one. Hey. You kind of leave back the tavern door as it swings shut and you start running off with everyone else. Um, Damien. Figured out what you're doing? I think so. I don't know if it's going to do much or... I'm going to try and guiding bolt it. <laughs> okay. Running out of options doesn't exactly make me a happy... Uh, is that a dexterity <laughs> save for the crate, or is that a, a no. spell attack for you? It's a spell attack, believe me. Okay, go for it. What kind of dexterity does a crate have? Uh, it's uh, a zero. Crate. Funny. Wait, it will hit the crate, yeah, and 15 damage. You kind of step back and just go, pa. <laughs> As you unleash a guiding bolt into the crate, the wood just starts radiating with uh, radiant energy. As part of it starts to, like, sizzle and burn away. You hear that the wood has some kind of hiss to it. And just... Ah, as, like, it starts... The light burns away some of the shadows that have been on it for a while. You hear the person inside freaking the ever-living fuck out. Calm down. Uh, they do not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, ah, it's flirting! It's burning! It hurts! Ah! Ah! They are Dear fucking God. screaming right now, Ark. Or Damien. What, what are you doing? I'm gonna reach in and, assuming that it's that's weakened the crate, try to pull parts of it off. Uh... Just yeah, with, uh, with the 15 damage dealt, you've definitely been able to make a decent hole. You can start reaching and start pulling out, like, wood to make a bigger hole. Uh, you start throwing open the coffin, and you just see a man just engulfed in fire. He's rolling around. Get me out of here! As soon as he sees, like, the opening, he kind of tries to crawl through. Uh, give me a perception check. Uh, as he's crawling through the hole and right past your face, you do see a brief glimpse of fangs on him. <laughs> oh. Oof. He kind of stands up and, like, starts patting off all the radiant energy that was on him. He's like, oh, oh. You're a vampire. Thank you. What? What? No? Fangs? You have fangs? What the fuck? He kind of like backs up and like knocks himself into a crate or the coffin that's standing up behind you. He goes, what are you talking about? I'm a farmer! Fangs. No, I don't want any fangs. 
you get your fucking freak self away from me. Jesus. God, what are you doing? What are you doing here? Oh, God. Okay. First off, Where? rude. I just got you out of the crate. Coffin. I can't see anything. Yeah, that's because the room is pitch black. Yeah. Do you have a torch or something? Please. <laughs> I'm scared of the dark. I hate to tell you, I'm kind of... I got nothing on me. Because I got taken from the arena. So... Uh, yeah, we're but not... you got me out of the crate. <sighs> Man, I am... We're... Really oh. hungry. <laughs> you got any food? There's gotta be food around here somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like know. someone saying woof. <laughs> <laughs> Justice! I gotta say Justin or something. <laughs> it's like, shut up, Justin! <laughs> Yeah, that that's just as deciding to to talk for some reason or other. Let the dogs out. No one, because they're inside. <laughs> about men. Yep. What? The song's about men. Mm. The men are the dogs. Oh yeah. Anyway. I thought the song was about uh, letting all the ugly women into the club. Nope. I thought that, but it's actually turns out it's actually about. The men, and the men are disgusting dogs. Fair. Anyway, um... Hold on. <laughs> that dog has some opinions. Yeah. Bashing my ankle against the edge of this chair now really fucking hurts. She really does have a lot of opinions for some reason. Um... Yeah, about that. <laughs> you also have comedic timing. <laughs> hey, Maddie. Yes. <gasps> you got gummy pigs. Um. And gummy pigs. And you didn't share them on Saturday. We have to get upstairs and get out of here before Almod or his servant. Ward come back down and find that there are two people alive down here that just got out of their coffins. You were in a coffin too? Yeah. Why are we in coffins? Well, what the hell's going on? I almost died in the arena. That's my excuse. What's yours? Um. I was cutting trees and then I just kind of passed out. Um, Say that again? I was walking in the woods next to my house, house and then I just kind, just kind of passed, passed out. out. Oh, well, there's, there's your problem. Don't you know to never walk in the woods alone? Wasn't in the woods, I was right on my tree line. Still, close enough that something can grab you, obviously. I had an axe on me. I'm pretty good with it. That doesn't mean shit when it comes to super, to <laughs> magical creatures. Anyway, let's, uh, let's try and see what we can do about this locked door at the top of the stairs, yeah? You might just want to follow right behind me. I can't, I can't I, where are you? I just grab his I can't hand. see you at all. You grab him. I grab his And he just kind of, he's like, ah, yeah. Right here. Why are you so warm? <laughs> you're so, like, he's like, oh, you're so clammy yet dry. I don't understand. What, do you have a fever? What is happening right now? You start leading him away. He trips over boxes constantly. Just dragging himself down. Just a uh, crunch. Ow, 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 ow. Hit something sharp. Mm, that's not good. Help. Help, guy. Faster on feet, good sir. Well, I, it'd help if I had some fucking light. I can't see shit. Is there a torch in any of these boxes? <laughs> That's a good question. Assuming that there's any kind of way to light it. 
Actually, you don't have anything to light something with? Actually, wait here. Actually, mm. Is there anything on the ground, like a stone or anything, that I can pick up? Yeah, you can find a rock. I'm gonna... What materials does that take? Fire? Shit! Okay, that doesn't work for me then, because I need a fire fire for phosphorescent moss, which of course I don't fucking have. I mean, I haven't really required materials in general, so go Fair. for it. <laughs> I'm gonna use I'm gonna use light on a stone to give us some kind of light. It ca it casts bright light in a twenty foot radius. Bright light, okay. Which as soon as it illuminates the room. He's like, oh fuck! Oh, it hurts! Jesus, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off! I can't! Oh fuck! Like, you see his skin visibly, like, smoking. Yeah, you got turned into a vampire, dude. I threw it ahead. Toward where, this, where I he see the He's avoiding that light source at all costs. Like, he's kind of looking around using the uh, reflections of the light and goes, what is. Where the fuck are we? We're in the storeroom of Alma the Necromancer's tower. If I have to you think he has any ale? God, I'm so thirsty. <clears throat> right. Let's um. Let's table that for a second so we can get upstairs. But yeah, dude, my dude, good sir. Ow! You got turned into a vampire. God, my teeth hurt. How did I get turned into a vampire? I have no fucking idea. You're asking the wrong person. What'd you do to me? How do I know that you're not behind this? Do I look like a vampire? My skin is red. I have horns. He's like, I can't even look at you right now. Come around the corner to where I can see you. Hey. So what? He's kinda like, he hid behind a corner? He's <laughs> hidden behind a corner because he can't be in direct light. <laughs> He kind of walk around the corner, and she goes, oh god, you're a demon. What? Tiefling. But... What did you do? If I make a deal with you, can I get powers? Is that how this shit works? No. I'm not that kind of demon. You're not even a good demon? Fuck! I'm not a demon. I'm a tiefling. Do you I grant wishes, at least? I'm not a genie, either. I think it's worse. I just... Wrap my tail around his wrist. Come on. Ugh. Why is it slimy as you, like, pull up along? It's not... <sighs> I mean, you don't have to save this man. Save me he is always, a good bean. He grabs, he grabs a tarp from <laughs> over on top of one of the cricks, kind of wraps himself in it, so his skin stops, like, sizzling in the light. <laughs> you start going up the stairway. And you hit the uh, heavy wooden door. You kind of push on, you hear the, hear the lock rattle on the other side. Huh. Do I still have... Uh, hmm. Assuming that I would be able to carry them in my pocket, would I still have my thieves tools? And would they possibly work on this door? It's more of like a wooden latch on the other side. Yeah. It sounds like you have a dude in your house just yelling woof, though. <laughs> like, it sounds like someone going woof, woof. Yeah, that, that's justice. Like your dad's just trying to fuck with you or something. <laughs> Look at the dude. Do you still have your axe on you? Uh, he kind of looks around and pats himself. He goes, uh, It might be in the coffin. Can I or trust did you? What? Can I trust you to get try and find your way back down and get your axe? What do you mean, can you trust me? What else am I going to do? Can you find your Fucking way back skip off to the pub? 
Can I find can you find your way back without help? I can go down the stairs, duh. Oh, God. God. He kinda like turns with the like cloak tied around him tightly. He a hug in the wall when he gets really close to the light rock. It's fucking this bullshit. Just wanna start a farm and he's just here you know, just mumble off into the distance. Dig around. We see an axe floating down the uh, aisle, and then gets deposited into a bucket. As you see him reach the far corner, opening up his coffin, like seeing where the shit would be. He goes, "No, I don't see anything over here. Check a bunch of broken sword. swords. What? Check the barrel next to your coffin." It would be like down a ways, but he starts checking random barrels. He goes, Hey! There's axes over here! He grabs his like woodcutter's axe, but he also sees like a great axe. And he's like, Oh. Just grabs the entire fucking barrel and start to, starts to drag it with him. With each step, just thunk, 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 thunk. He's bringing a crate of weapons with him. Please don't tell me you're bringing an entire crate of weapons. I can sell these! I can feed my family for so long! Do you know how much these weapons are worth? That's an iron great axe! That's at least 15 gold! Okay? You know how long you work for to buy a great axe? 15 gold is not worth your life if we don't get out of here. It's not worth your life if we don't get out of here. gold. I'm damn taking this shit! I got pets to pay. I don't know about you. I've got a, I've got a girl I'd like to get back to and a baby. And I can't do that if you're bringing a crate that's gonna slow us down. It's not my fault you knocked someone up. How is this my problem? It's not my problem, but it's gonna be your problem if I end up dying here. I mean, it won't be my problem either because I don't know who the hell they are. <laughs> if I know Alari. She's gonna be on her way, and you don't want to piss off an Asimar on a good day, but you definitely don't want to piss off a pregnant Asimar. What the hell is an Asimar? Listen, dude, you're talking some real, real weird shit for a demon. She's a fallen angel. So she's like you? No. So, a demon and an angel? Isn't that a little fucking like cliche? You know. Did you no, ever read a fucking storybook? <laughs> it's like, oh, devils seduce an angel and bring them to their side, uh, or vice versa. I think she did more of the seducing than I did, but that's another story. Regardless, pick two. And leave the rest. You hear him just like dump out the bucket with the, the loud clang of all the weapons hitting the floor. Kinda like he kind of like sits down and starts scooting down. through them. He's like, well, I don't want my fucking wood axe, because I can just, if I can only have two, I'm taking. Gonna get mm. <laughs> um, let's go to everyone else. <laughs> uh, probably Sabina and Karnas. Do you guys make your way to the uh, tower, I presume? Ye. Yeah. That's where the oh. boom came from, right? That's right. You, you look up and you see, uh... It's like a, got a blue tiled, like, roof that's tilted upwards in a circle. The tower is, like, circular and just goes up. You know, you've seen towers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... The base of it has a large, uh, garden in front. That's gated, but like on the side, so you can still walk up to the front. <clears throat> As you reach the tower, and like you try to go for the door, it's locked. Karnas knocks. Uh, Karnas goes, bang, 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 bang. bang. Yeah. Nothing. <clears throat> Hello? You hear vague shouting from about 100 feet up. Coming from the windows. Kind of like shout, looks up and like shouts out the window. Hello, is anyone home? You see a uh, a teenager 
a half elven teenager kind of pop his head out the window, just coughing. <coughs> Are you okay? Sorry, Sorry, we're a bit closed for business at the moment. I have a question. It's very important. Can you come, Can you come back, back tomorrow? tomorrow? We kind of have a thing we're dealing with. No, I think you have my friend. No, I think you need to come back tomorrow. And that's not gonna... We're putting out a, a little fire right now. That doesn't work for me. I need to, I need to be here now. He, like, kind of tucks back in. The fire? You hear more muttering. And just smoke billowing out the top of the windows. What are you guys I... doing? If you let me in, sir, I could put the fire out. Uh, roll me persuasion, Maddie. I mean, it, it is truthful, though. Roll That's high, what persuasion roll is. Roll high, roll high. I have a plus six. <laughs> He's my inspiration. You can if you want. I'm gonna do that. I can't tell you how to use your inspiration. 21! <laughs> I think I might have jinxed that first one, my bad. God, fuck it. First roll of the night for me, too. You hear someone oh, yeah. pop their head out and goes, yeah, what can you do to help it? I have some spells I can put it out with. I also have spells I can put it out with. If they're not taking. Is it magical fire? Of course it's magical fire. It's a wizard tower. Never mind. You hear another <laughs> come from the upstairs. Um... Maybe you should stop exploding things. <laughs> he has a point. You just hear two uh, people just scream up top. What are you guys doing? I mean, we should help them, right? It's only right. Does anyone know how to put out magical fire? I'm a fighter. I'm not. I don't do magic. I may or may not have still not taken dispel magic. I have to. I have some dispel magic. Might work. Excuse me, our friend Bromley can help you. I think I'm leaving their head up. Then get it up here. The door is locked. Figure it out! Hello, Amora! <laughs> uh, no, we're not bringing that in. Karnas can't do magic anyway, so... You're an elder Knight! Oh, yeah. Yes, you can! God. Oh, God. Would you never do magic? I know. So, so I don't know why you wanted to pick that subclass. Because I thought it would be funny. And it is, because I always forget to do it. because <laughs> you never yeah. do magic. Um. <laughs> Karnas turns to the party. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blast the door. Blast the door with what you got? I got magic. What kind of magic? Um, it's purple. Alright. She back up. Jerry kind of leaves back and walks into the street, just kind of crosses his arm, arms over his blue tunic, and goes, go ahead, what you go? Okay. Uh, I'm going to Eldritch blast the door. <laughs> oh, God. Can you move away from the door? Yeah, move away from the door. Karna said back up. I kind of step, step away from my shield up. <clears throat> And he goes, everyone back up! As he raises his little claws and a little spark of just, uh, 
purple energy cracks out, like purple lining, into the door, and a little bit of uh, wood splinters off, real comically, <laughs> like, small. And then kind of pushes on the door. Still. Still. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear Jerry go, that was amazing. Thanks, I'm glad someone appreciates it. <laughs> I'm gonna cast Firebolt on the door. Go for it. Wait, is the magic from Firebolt magical or non-magical? Uh, uh, go ahead and take a wild guess what the magic spell does, Maddie. I'm gonna take back the concept of using that and use Mold Earth instead. Okay. Can I dig under the door and then dig back up? Uh, if it's loose stone on the inside. Oh. You generally can't do it to crafted stone. That makes sense. Damn it. <coughs> well, I don't want to cause more fire. Are you sure? <laughs> Brian, how excited were you when I was going to launch that? I was going to be a little excited. <laughs> Bromley, you got anything? Oh, did you bring down the door? Yeah. yeah. Not really. No, I'm, I'm, oh, they have. Uh, Freaking hiccups, man. It's like a big heavy, it's like a heavy wood door or something like that. Does yeah. anyone have an axe? I mean, I, I can beat on it if I fail. Um, I'm or, or, or look around the, uh, or, or, or look around the uh, tower if there's any other way to get in. Well, give me a perception check if you want to look around. Yeah. Yeah, if I can find it. There it is. I don't see shit. <laughs> the going around the tower. To look for another way in or something to help you. You get distracted by some mountain flowers that you haven't seen anywhere except grow on your uh, on the mountain that you grew up on. Is that? Yeah, I'm looking around the tower. Then I turn. I see that. I'm like, Girl. mountain flower. It has been a long way that I've seen that something something like this. You remember they just smell super sweet. It, 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 I go up now. Uh, go to home. Just like gives you flashback, which then prompts Bromley to just kind of sit down in the flowers, and <laughs> then he starts just giggling a lot. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Hi. Your childhood play out in front of you. Uh, uh Haley, your Twitch thing. Stop. Oh no! It's on the like crashed there. old head. Now it's no. back. Mine just has it buffering. That fucking Maddie with a twenty-eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine is also buffering. Oh, up! Oh, it's back. Good. You gotta refresh the page. Uh, Maddie. Yeah. Sabina recognizes these as uh, crimson mountain flowers. They are, they are primarily used for uh, surgeries to make people not feel the pain. So the good news is, is if Bromley needs an appendectomy, we're ready. 
What's it have to do with an epic me? To be milled down and make powerful <laughs> drugs. He's basically he's high as balls. Uh, so I'm gonna take the flower from him and try to guide him away from the patch. Jamie might All be right. killed as soon as he's done with this situation. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, with, with Sabina right there, now all of a sudden, something, something, my hand goes like that. I'm like, that's my childhood. <laughs> my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, wanna... It's like a long tree branch just kind of grabs your flower that you're sniffing and just like picks it up, becomes part of the tree and like starts moving away on like a long vine and you just fucking Looney Tune style just kind of chase after it. I'm just going to sit him in front of the door and be like, watch the pretty door and drink this water. Tree and talking. All right, I guess I have a little water. Uh, Bromley, roll me intelligence check at disadvantage. <laughs> but, oh, uh, no. Twice. Twice on this. Try to take the yeah. lowest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one. There's the other. Oh. Oh, <laughs> uh, Bromley. You remember the last time you saw a talking tree it was a demon. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. I was like I was like, wait a second. The last time a talking tree tried to give me something uh it was a I I was fighting I was gonna try tracking a demon. You start getting flashbacks to Baz when you were fighting him. And it's like uh I remember when Baz was around. Uh, I, I, I kind of bring my shield back up, and I'm like, where is he at? I, I, I don't know who Baz is. He wasn't. He was a very powerful demon I was tracking. Well, I'm not very familiar with any demons at all. But I just need you to take a deep breath now. <clears throat> also, there's a cat. It's like, how do I know you're not the demon? Because I'm not a demon. I'm a, well, right now I'm a human. Not what I'm seeing. <laughs> what are you seeing? Uh, Bromwell, you catch on to the, right now I'm not a demon. <laughs> I am a human. Uh, I, I understand that, uh, thing. It's like, wait. I, I'm confused now. Demon? Human? What? Not a demon, just a human. Um, okay. Do I know how to, like, counteract this, or is this one of those, like, you have to write it out kind of drugs. Uh, go ahead and give me medicine. Out of interest because of your high nature check. Okay, you're not going to be proud of me. <laughs> I almost rolled in chat. Why would I be proud of you? I said you're not going to be. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, you were very so right. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. No, that one didn't go correctly. That you are 20 and one. That's just basic math. I'm so exhausted. <laughs> 20. Hey, not bad. <laughs> um, you, there's potions to make it go faster, but generally, if you don't have the concoction. Like the anti antidote for it, you're just gonna have to write it out. Do I remember the long or the duration of action? Like how About long is four it? Four hours. Oh fuck! Anyone know how to trips it? doing all this. Um. 
probably just watching uh, Bromley and Sabina and wondering why he's saying Sabina is a demon. Um, he goes over. Um, Bromley? It's like, what would I, what would I see uh, Karnas as if I see the other guy is a... Uh, You'd probably see, see Karnas as a, uh, a very small, like, dragon whelpling. Cool. And, uh, I'm, I'm looking at like a like, young red dragon. There you go. And I look, uh, I'm looking ar- look around and I was like, tree that says, not demon, human. And, ah! Dragonling? That's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. If you think I look like a dragonling, well, that's just great. I've always wanted to be a dragon. But no, it's me, Karnas. Alright, little dragonling. Um, and that's, um, that's not a demon? That's Sabina. Roll persuasion. Persuasion is minus one. Oh. Sixteen. And Bromley, go ahead and roll insight. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you're, 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 you're buying it. You're picking up what the dragon's saying. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, little whiffling. Sabina? Yeah. Okay. Something's, something's starting to do start ring something. Yeah, are you okay? You you just kind of sat down over there. Yeah. I'm still a little... Uh, not understanding a lot of this. Tree, that stuff says... That says, uh, I believe the demon says it's human. And a little dragonling telling me that, that that's... Car- uh, Sabina. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot confused right now. Maybe you need to take a nap. No, we're in, uh, I'm be good for right a bit, for a little bit. Um. Well, we need to get inside this castle so we can save Damien. Not castle tower. What you guys hear a loud crash right behind the door, with more shouting coming from inside. This time, more internalized. Karnas shouts and hello! Um, Damien, you are able to hear the shrill voice of Karnas? Just barely through the door. Karnas? That's... Okay. Well, Just because of, like, the pitch of his voice. Yeah. Well, I... Hurry up, farmer. Well, which one do you think will sell more? It doesn't matter, it's just to get us out of here. It matters to me! Okay? This is like three years worth of crops. You don't understand. You rich folk never understand what us working class people have to do. That doesn't necessarily Oh, adventurer. That's a pretty name for grave robber, aren't you? No. Mm. We're not the greatest adventurers in the world. I'm I'm not an adventurer! I wasn't talking. Yes, Maddie. He's a fine, fine. The shiniest. Uh, he grabs a great axe and a uh, a a heavy maul, and he's just dragging like the two heaviest things up the stairs. Stay right there for a second. Well, do you want me to come help or not? Yes, I do. I'm just I'm gonna try something, and you don't want to be in range of this. <coughs> fine. I'm gonna. Follow. I'm gonna pull a card, so I'm gonna try Eldritch Blast on the on the door. All right, go for it. Let me roll. Twenty six with one damage. <laughs> so it's about what Carnus did. You like you better stand back as you like your old little sparks of force power from your hand shoot directly into the door. A couple splinters come off of it. Well, it was. What a fucking adventurer you are! Do you have any other shows of power that'll save us from the... 
necromancer that's upstairs turning people to vampires? Actually, one of the tricks to try. What are you gonna do? Talk to it? Sing it a song. I'm gonna try and burn it. Oh, yeah, that'll do great. I'm gonna sacred flame the door. Okay. 14 damage. I mean, it can't dodge, so. Yeah. You light the door on fire. He fucking screams as more radiant light is entering the the cellar. He goes, ah, my eyes! Um, Carnus, you hear screaming coming from inside. I wonder if that's Damien! Damien! Um, the door sparks on fire momentarily, but it, radiant flame is not enough to, like, burn down a door. It's more like a momentary shine. Okay, so light gone then. You can, yeah. Huh? You can get rid of your light spell at any time. Well, no, not not the light spell, but the radiant light from the door on the door. Oh yeah, for like a couple, like two seconds, it flashes on fire and then it burns out. Okay, I'm gonna just go up and grab one of the axes, or I'm gonna try and grab the great axe from and try to swing at the door. This is mine. What are you doing? You can have it back when I get the door down. Oh my god, there's plenty of other axe. Fine. Uh, are you proficient with a great axe? Uh, no, I am not. So it'd be a, it'd be a roll with disadvantage anyway. So you're at disadvantage and you don't gain proficiency. Honest. So roll your strength to hit. You don't gain proficiency. <laughs> Seven. You don't even hit the door. You can't, like, you start to swing and it's so fucking heavy, you just Right if it against the wall to eventually just thud into it and it just falls down. You just kind of stare at it for a little bit like, how oh, the fuck do people wield these? These are heavy. Alright. You want to take a swing, farmer? I mean, I was trying. Here, here. You get out of the way. How about you do that? I won't use any, any puny little spells. No, that, he kind of like rolls up his sleeves. You see his pale skin. Uh, roll me a medicine, Damien. Nine. Okay. Nice tonight, Jesus. Nine. Um, you see him lift the heavy ass maul and just fucking slam it right into the uh, like the little handle latch where the handle is. Yeah. And it just flies open, slamming against the wall and shatters. He goes, that's how you open a fucking door. Jesus. Clearly. I like the heft of this. Huh. Like, you see his forearms just start growing bigger in size. That's not normal. It's like, all right. There's gotta be food out here, and he kind of runs off into the middle area. Uh, Garnus and Sabina, Bromley, well, maybe not Bromley, but you guys hear a loud crash coming from inside again, and then someone shouting about food. They're hungry for fire, I guess? What are you guys doing? Do we recognize the voices? Uh, from what you heard, no. Okay. Um. Carnus would like to try to Eldritch Blast the door again. Go for it. Go for it. Is, uh, Bromley in front of it? Is, uh, is anyone I'm in front Brom of it? No. Bromley's not in front of it. I assume just... Bromley's safely tucked away somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> not in harm's way. Okay. Wow. Fifteen's just what you need to hit a door. 
<laughs> Great, do I open um, it? Do you fucking blast, blast and more like chunks, chunks of wood start flying off? Brommel, you see the dragon, the dragon do, a do a fireball against the door. And you're like, fuck, that looks fun. <laughs> you seem intrigued into attacking the door with the dragon. 